Yes, we're going to go ahead. The broadcast ahead. is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, this webinar is to focus on automotive. Um, my name is Crystal. I work in sales and ad ops here at El Toro. And then we also have Matt Barrier. Thank you again for joining everyone. Throughout the webinar, um, there is a chat box on your right side. Feel free to type in any questions and we will get to them all at the end. Um, and then if we have any leftover, we'll answer them after the webinar is completed. So with this webinar, our purpose is to give you a little bit more knowledge on how you can use our technology um, for the automotive industry. Whether you are an automotive dealer or you are a reseller that has clients that are automotive, no matter your knowledge level in the automotive space, um, we should be able to give you an insight on how you can make this work um, and a little bit more look in, deeper look into it. So here at El Toro, we have been around for a little over three and a half years. Um, we are a digital ad tech company based out of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we have most recently been featured on entrepreneur.com uh, for our political work. Um, and the last year we have ran over 862 different political campaigns. Um, the infographic on entrepreneur.com is pretty cool. If you have time to check it out, it's on how you can buy the presidency using digital advertising. Um, we also won Louisville Business First Emerging Company of the Year. Uh, so we're growing and we're growing at a very fast rate. And we've been getting a lot more acknowledgement, not only locally, but on a worldwide basis. So what is the difference of El Toro's technology? Um, we are leading a technology that only we are the only people in the world that have this. Um, we obviously can use this for multiple different industries, not only um, automotive, um, but there's a list right there on that PowerPoint for you. El Toro targeting is 50 to 100 times more targeted than doing a TV spot. Um, we are able to leverage the granularity of offline data and target people at a household level. So instead of a one to unknown, um, we can get it down to a one to one household. So you know who you're targeting um, with the lack of cookies and you're avoiding that fraudulent traffic. And Matt will get into a little bit of that just to kind of give you guys a quick recap if you're not familiar with uh, non-human traffic, fraudulent traffic, or cookie traffic. Uh, so we have the ability to prove our technology with a match back at the end. So if your clients, such as automotive clients, have the ability to give us who bought cars in that month or after their campaign is complete, we can perform a match back. We'll go over that in a little bit more detail as well. So our product arsenal. Um, our core technology is our IP algorithm. So what that is, is we can take a list of physical addresses and we can cross-reference them on our platform. So we use over 30 different public data platforms to cross-reference and to be able to identify the IP address with a 95% confidence level or higher. Um, so that's really the core of our technology. Um, captive audience, instead of targeting a household, we're able to target a business or a venue. So it's more venue targeting. Um, you can also use this on dealerships or um, your competitor's dealerships. And then Digital New Movers is our newest product. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into that as well. So this patent pe pending algorithm that I was just speaking of, um, this kind of explains a little bit of how it works. Um, so here's some examples of the different public data platforms that we use. Um, so it may be transactional data. Uh, you make a purchase on Amazon.com. That's going to leave a little dot. We'll be able to see that. When we have enough to give us that confidence level of 95% or higher, um, we mark that as a target. If they fall below that confidence level, we're going to mark that as a false. We do not want to waste your impressions on somebody unless we know with that confidence level that that is the physical address that you're wanting to target. Another great thing about our IP algorithm is it can know the difference and it is able to determine the difference between a physical IP address and a hosting IP address. Um, we're also able to do it on a one-to-one -one ratio. So anybody else out there that has IP targeting, um, they're either using a combination of cookies or they're targeting a cluster or a zone of IPs instead of just an individual IP. Uh -uh. 
so I, I love this slide because it really speaks to the you know how, how El Toro is different from literally ev everyone else in the world. My my background is in the domain space, so we would own domain names like cars.com and and you know broker deals and sell those types of names to like Ford or we would own renovate.com and we'd sell that domain name to someone like Home Depot. So we would go to these these traffic conferences and these domain conferences and there'd be hundreds of companies there selling traffic and you've probably gotten an email before they said, you know, we'll send, you know, 100 visitors to your website for $10. And the more we looked into these companies and we asked questions, the more we found that they were just sending robots to our websites, so programs. And they would move around our site. They would leave our site. And, and the more real they looked, the more they could charge for these visitors. Now, the, the deeper we dug, we found that these robots, they didn't just die when they got to our site. They would go to, you know, Google, they would go to other websites, Home Depot, and they would get cookied by these sites. So they would, you know, fill a contact form out on, a, on a, another website. And when they would enter the zip code and hit submit on that site, they would get cookied with that location and that zip code. So Again, you know, it would it would go to Home Depot and get cookied with that renovation cookie and it would look like hey, this person is is interested in renovating their home. So, these robots currently they're getting mixed into the pool of traffic that everyone in the world is bidding on when you're bidding on, you know, the drop-down levers when you're targeting based on a zip code or you're targeting based on demographics. Um, you know, you're you're bidding on on these this this fraudulent this this robot traffic is mixed into the the real human traffic that you're trying to get and until now until today there was no real way to bid on a specific IP address and until we integrated into app nexus uh, again there was no way to to bid on an actual IP so we bypass all of that cookie traffic that pool of traffic that everyone else in the world is bidding on and we allow you to to bid on a specific home address or ip address and you know this this speaks on you know google is is a um a big player in the uh space as far as indexing websites on the web you know they're going to different sites different ads clicking ads indexing sites so you know that's a, another large part of this non-human traffic that gets mixed into these you know the the pool and the dsps where you're bidding on traffic this slide right here really speaks to that and gives a, a nice visual uh, you know, it speaks on the, the online logic, the cookie logic that everyone is using. You know, this IP address has, has been to this site. Therefore, they're interested in, in this particular product. I know me personally, I do a lot of work from home. And so I'll visit random websites and then throughout the days and weeks after, I'll, I'll get those ads from those sites that I was visiting. And I might have, you know, been to a, a boat website or a jet ski website, but I'm not interested in buying a jet ski. I'm doing this for work. However, the online logic, the cookie logic, thinks that I'm interested in those types of things versus we, we like to take the offline logic of, of using real hard factual data and, and transferring that into an online targeting platform where we know this person is interested in a car. Maybe his lease is coming up next month. Or maybe this person comes in, you know, every six months for a tune-up and he's a couple months late. So, you know, we'll take that physical home address that, that a lot of dealerships and agencies have in their CRM. We'll convert that into an IP address and send very specific tailored ads to that home and only that home. So, you know, stop guessing like we say and start knowing who you're ideal target is and let's send a, a relevant message that's going to have a, a huge impact on that particular home. A lot of agencies and, and, and clients that, that we talk to and that I talk to, I, I try to get them to not only rethink the way they think about direct mail, but also banner ads. And 
a lot of the, the agencies I'm talking to anymore, I'm, I'm trying to get them to think of those ads. And as you browse the internet, don't think of those ads at the top of most websites, just as, just as banner ads anymore. Start to think of that as these people's digital mailbox, your, your target's digital mailbox. You know, that, that's prime real estate. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's huge to be able to put your message literally front and center wherever these people go. And, and we're finding it's very hard to get away from that message. And, and while we love direct mail and we love email, you know, sometimes email goes into a spam folder. Somebody might not necessarily see that or, you know, they, they see the direct mail piece and they throw it away. But again, we're finding that these additional touches as these people move throughout the Internet, they see your ad at the top of ESPN. They go over to weather.com. They see your ad again. These, these additional touches in what I call the new digital mailbox, them seeing your ad is really moving the needle to get these people to come into the dealership or get them to, to renew their lease. So. Again, start to think of those ad spots as you browse the internet, you know, this weekend, later this week, as as literally these people's digital mailbox. This is the new digital mailbox. With with our technology, you literally have the opportunity to put your message front and center wherever these people go. So our matchback analysis is something that we offer at the end of every campaign if it is something that you yourself or if you're a reseller or client would like to have. Um, imagine to be able to actually see your return of investment. Um, so digital tradi advertising, traditional focus on clicks and CTR. Um, the great thing about a matchback is we can actually tell you who purchased out of the targeted IPs and we can tell you what that lift and that improvement rate is for the people we targeted versus that control group, the people we didn't target. Um, so when you run a list through our algorithm um, and it comes back with only the 95% confidence level or higher matches, it's going to have about 50% um, that we are able to match on that original list. And in that list, it's going to add an extra column. And that column is going to have a T or an F next to it. T are the targets, those households that we are able to identify their IP address and we will be serving display or video ads to. The false, we look at that as your control group. Those are the ones that we are not going to target. So at the end of the campaign, traditionally with automotive, we say to give it two to three weeks after your campaign is complete. Um, all we need is the list of addresses of people who have purchased a new car within that campaign period. We take that information and we will cross-reference it with the original list. And we pull out every single match that we find, whether it was in that targeted group or in that control group. Then we'll give you an analysis and tell you how many conversions you had, um, and then the lift and the improvement rate for the people we targeted versus the people we didn't target. So the ability to focus on actual return of investment. I spent X amount on this campaign, but I actually made this much because I sold 10 cars. That is what's important to us. Um, that is how we want to measure the success of your campaigns. Uh, just because somebody doesn't click on it, um, we don't want you to lose that attribution of that sale. Um, a lot of people don't click on things. Um, my myself being in this industry, I don't like to click on things because I don't want to be followed around by a bunch of ads. Um, so this allows you to actually get that attribution of someone who visited or um, came into and purchased a car. Just to, to piggyback on that, you know, like like she said, we have a lot of, we found that a lot of clients have, have found that, you know, their end users, like she said, they they see the ad and then they just make a phone call or they see that ad and that brings them into the store. And as far as that that process that she spoke about, typically. Uh, a list that, that, that we're provided, you know, by an agency or, or an, a dealership, typically the whole list gets direct mail. The only difference is about half of that list gets these additional banner ads. And that's, that's you know, what, what Crystal's speaking to as far as the, the half that's the control group that only gets direct mail. And then the other half, they still get direct mail. The only difference, they get these additional banner ads, these additional touches. And again, that's what we're finding is, is moving the needle and getting them to come in and, and purchase a car. So just an overview of how this process would work. Um, you or your client would provide us with your CRM list. Um, we can even 
create a lookalike list if you don't want to use your original CRM list. It's going to run through that IP algorithm. Um, when it runs through that algorithm, it's going to return an append telling you who we can target and who we cannot target um, with a 95% confidence level or higher. Then you'll use our self-serving order portal and you will upload your creative and the landing pages that you're wanting your creative to click through to. Um, and then we take it from there. So we manage it on the back end. We serve those display or those video ads using our real-time bidding system um, that we had to integrate into the exchanges to allow us to bid directly on the IP address um, going around all of the cookie and the fraudulent traffic, um, we are only serving to those households with at those IP addresses. So someone physically has to be online at that address to start, see those ads. Then we offer um, a matchback to show you that return of investment. And we have that confidence level of 95% or higher. So another one of our products is captive audience, or um, as we like to call it, venue targeting. Um, so this is great in the automotive space. Um, what you're able to do is you could target around just your dealership. You can target around your competitor's dealership. Um, or you can actually go around to different locations um, that you're wanting to get people. So if there's a trade show or a convention in town, you can hit that trade show. You can hit all the hotels surrounding it. Um, if there is a big concert and you want to hit people who are around there, you can hit the hotels where people would be staying around that concert. Um, so this is truly venue targeting. Um, and instead of having to have a list, you're just telling us what locations. Um, we manually go in and pull the IPs. Um, so you're not getting any of the crossing traffic or the mobile tower traffic. You're just strictly getting those IPs. And I actually, I, I have a, a client and I had no clue this would, this would work, but it's, it's, it's working extremely well. So they, they are doing some campaigns for dealerships that sell RVs, dealerships that sell boats, and they're now getting into the, the car space, but they started targeting their competitors dealerships and they were finding that you know, uh, the, the people on the lot there, they were doing a lot of price comparisons on their phone. So they got the, or, you know, we got the IP address of all their competitors and we would send ads to that IP address. So when those customers were on the lot doing price comparisons, they would see the ad for our client's dealership. And those are working extremely well. So just, just you know, an idea to throw out there of what's working. That's a great example, Matt. So our other product we have is Digital New Movers, um, and this is great in the automotive industry. So what it is, is we have partnered with Averick Direct, who is the leaders in new mover data. So instead of you having to provide us with a CRM list or a lookalike list that you're wanting to target, um, you would just tell us what state, city, or even narrow it down by um, a certain set of zip codes that you're wanting to target. Uh, the next thing you would choose is what category you're wanting to target. So we have three categories, pre-movers, escrow, and post-movers. So pre-movers is someone who has just listed their house for sale. Um, so their house is up for sale right now. Your escrow is someone who has a contract on their house. And your post-mover is someone who's just moved in. Now with post-movers, we are able to serve traffic within 24 hours of them activating their internet service. Being first to reach these digital new movers is critical uh, because they spend on average $8,700 in the first 30 days. Um, it is a billion dollar a year industry um, for new movers. They have a high intent to purchase. Um, and we've seen numbers that show how many people actually buy cars. Um, so they moved into a new home. Now they want a new car. Uh, so that's very common, and we've seen a great success so far in the digital new movers in the automotive industry. So let's talk about some different strategies. So we have CRM strategies. Um, you can use your current CRM, or you can um, do a lookalike list based off of it. So if you want to do a leasing offer, say you have a group in your CRM that lease is getting ready to expire. Um, you can start hitting them with the newer model of the same car with a offer that they already qualify for because you already know where they fall within that credit range, credit score range. Um, and then you can offer that to them. 
driving them in and getting them to come in and do it. Same thing if they're getting ready to buy or pay off their car, if they've purchased a car. Um, a lot of people, when they have a couple months left before they pay off their car, they start trading it in. So this is a crucial time to start hitting them. And you're able to customize it with the granularity of the data that you already have of who these people are and what car they currently are driving. Another thing that we've seen be very successful is surveys. Um, so a lot of automotive dealerships have to have so many surveys done. Um, you can target people that have recently purchased a car or come in for service, even if it's been several years, and get more of those surveys filled out. Another strategy is conquest. Um, so you can not only target as Matt put, um, your competitors. So you can do some geo conquesting where you are hitting their dealership when someone is out there price matching. Um, but you can choose different things. So you can see that someone has three plus kids and you can offer them a customized offer um, for a bigger car because right now they own a small car and maybe they need an SUV. Or you can take that granularity of knowing their interest. Um, so this is a great example, someone who goes camping. Um, you can get that data and actually start showing them, in this example, a 2015 Jeep that would be great and have camping gear in it and appeal to their interest and grab their attention by the granularity of how deep your ad is reaching out to them. So some other sample campaigns besides what we've already talked about is um, promoting different seasonal offers that you have um, or retail events. So you can use this to your advantage in any form and fashion that you're wanting to promote a certain event, a certain offer, drive traffic into it by reaching people who are interested, people are good intenders, instead of just um, hitting everybody and hoping that you're hitting a few of the right people. So we're going we're gonna to show you a few links, some resources that we give all of our clients. The first one being spider.io. So I, I highly recommend everyone, you know, sometime this week, this week, and just browse this site, spider.io. It's a, a blog actually owned by, by Google, and it really gets into the, the online fraud space, the cookie space. Um, it really is a deep dive, and this is straight from Google. So you know how how companies, how people are impersonating uh, impersonating real web website visitors, how people are gaming the system, you know the, the cookie fraud, how how big it is, sharing of of PC owners cookies. So it, it really takes a deep dive into the the back end, the, you know the dark world a lot of people don't know about and, and like I tell a lot of people that get on these you know after after going through these webinars and, and these links you're going to be ahead of 95% of your competition out there just by you know browsing through this and it, it, attending some of our uh, webinars and, and resources. Um, another page that we often um, refer people to is unbounce.com. Um, so this is great if you are needing help to build a landing page, um, a click-through page. It has uh, different resources telling you what's successful, what's not, and, and you can actually build and publish it through this website. Another website is moat.com. Um, I actually love this website because you can type in a competitor um, or you can see what other car dealerships are doing for Ford sales. And it is going to pull up all the different, that's good, <laughs> but we'll pull up Ford for Ford sales. So it's going to tell you all the different offers that we have um, out there right now. And you can see uh, what your competitors are doing. And it helps you figure out different calls to action. Um, and we, we invite you to run multiple types of advertise or creative when doing a campaign. So have do a, B, a to B testing and have two different calls to action. See what's getting you more engagement. See what's bringing more people into the door. Uh, so this is just a great resource tool for you guys to check out if you're needing help in building your creative. Another thing that we provide for all of our resellers and our direct clients is our reseller kit. Um, so if you didn't know about it, uh, ask your sales rep for the link. 
It is a great way to see some different white labeled matchbacks. So you can see results that we've gotten um, from other campaigns that we have ran, some different case studies. It also has some sales um, and tools that are white labeled that you can actually use when putting together a presentation or a pitch. So this right here is that matchback analysis. Um, it's showing you how much, how many people are in that population of your targeted group and your control group, um, what percent of the total population. So you can see this was a very small targeted group. Only 23.4% um, were actually targeted out of the entire list. But out of that 23% of that list, they had 17 conversions. Um, and a response rate of 0.3, almost double what the control group did, even though it was three times the size. Uh, so you can see it's going to vary depending on your actual segment size, how many people are in your target and your control group. But just because it only matches half or a little less than half, you can still get great results. So this is great for you to take a look at and share with your automotive dealers or with your clients if you're a reseller. and show them what results they can expect to see. Now we're going to take a look and see if anybody has any questions. So if you haven't typed anything in yet, go ahead and get your questions in. Yes. Um, so somebody asked, can we email this deck to you after the presentation? Absolutely. Um, just email either Matt or myself and let us know that you're wanting the deck. Um, my email address is crystal at eltoro.com and Matt is just Matt at eltoro.com and we will get you a copy of this deck over. Or just, you know, reach out to your account rep mm -hmm. and they'll reach out to one of us and we'll send it through. The next question is, the location would have to offer Wi-Fi access for smartphones to access their IP, right? Yes. So typically, a lot of the dealerships, they have that, that, uh, that Wi-Fi that the majority of people uh, attach to. So, um, you know, like when you go home, typically smartphones automatically switch over to that, that free, that Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So, Also, if you're getting, uh, you have people in your dealership getting service done, um, they're waiting in the, the little waiting room and they're going to connect to that Wi-Fi um, instead of using their own data. And they can see an offer that is, if you're a competing or competing auto dealership, you could ha send an offer to that person and still someone who's not only purchased a car from another dealership, but they're frequently getting service done there. That's a lifetime customer for you to, to take from there. So that's a great opportunity to do some conquesting and pull a consumer from one dealership to another. Yeah, that's great. What type of creative do you find most effective? Um, it depends on if you're doing display or video. Um, with display, the big thing, I, I think that animated ads get your attention a little bit more and you have a little bit more room to give a, a bigger message. Um, but the big thing is your call to action. So just make sure you, you customize it and you have a strong offer and a strong call to action to drive people to either your website or to your dealership. Mm -hmm. A lot of great ads that I see, you know, have the price of the car, have the specific car or cars on the ad. And like she said, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a really elaborate ad that is, you know, colorful and smooth transitions. We're finding that the, the, you know, the, 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 the transitions that are smooth don't really catch your eye as much as, you know, a flashing word or a, a dot that just kind of darts across your screen and, and kind of draws your eye up to that ad. So it's all about, you know, catching the attention of, of that particular user at that home. Um, and again, you know, the ads that, you know, take over the screen or, you know, that are really elaborate and smooth transitions, those get looked over versus the, you know, flashing in mm -hmm. your face alert kind of red flashing uh, message. So Absolutely. great question. Well, and keep in mind, too, that you if you're using a CRM data list, you already know what they qualify for. Um, so ads that get a great response also. Um, have what their monthly payment would be or how much it was it will be down because you know that they qualify for it. So when they come to the dealership, they're going to be able to get that offer and they're not going to be uh, have sticker shock or be surprised because they don't qualify for it. So using the granularity of that data to customize it 
makes it great and helps with their clothes when they're actually at the dealership. Are there certain days of the week or times of day it's better to advertise? So it, it really varies. And with, with our technology and our platform, since we're advertising to that IP, that, that specific home, we send ads to that home when that person's online. So, you know, if they're on at night, you know, you know, we're, we're only going to send ads to that home when they're online at that particular time. Um, but, but no, no real time, um, of day, um, you know, lends itself to, to more car sales. It's, it's all about just being, um, you know, mind's eye of that particular person, you know, wherever they go, they're seeing your ad. So it's just about building that resonance that we need, you know, those additional touches that go beyond just that one direct mail piece or that one email. So someone else has a great question on here. How do you know you have the car driver in the house, not the preschool kid watching the iPad? Um, we actually block, uh, I believe it's around 250 different children's websites. It's a safe segment that we put on all of our campaigns because we don't want to hit that preschooler that's just playing on Nickelodeon.com or watching a YouTube video. Um, we want it to reach the adults in the household. Um, so by blocking those children's websites, we really cut down on the amount of impressions that are shown to a child. Um, and it's more so just the adult in the household that is seeing the ads. A great question. Does anybody else have any questions? So where are your ads shown? What websites? So we actually have access to 91% of the inventory out there. Um, so your ads are going to be shown wherever they are going. So if they go to ESPN.com and there's a place for that 300 by 250, um, your ad could be displayed there. If two days later they get on and they go to weatherchannel.com, um, your ad could be displayed there. We are following people in real time. Um, since we're bidding on those IP addresses, we're going where they're going um, versus relying or waiting for them to get on certain sites to display those ads. Just a, a little more in depth on that. So we had to custom integrate in, inside of the DSP. We're integrated with App Nexus, and we are sniffing all of the incoming traffic into their platform. So if you know, we know John Smith at 123 Main Street, this is their IP address, we actually get alerted when they come online. So we see them online and we see them go to ESPN.com and we have literally fractions and fractions of seconds. This is all the technology working and we have fractions of seconds to get your ad on that website in front of that particular person. And that's how we do that. Is there a set CPM or do you bid on inventory? Um, we are on a CPM platform. If you contact your account executive or your sales rep, um, they can give you more information on that. So one of the last questions I see on here, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. So if, if you have any more questions, you know, please uh, feel free to type them in here. Or if you have questions afterwards, again, you have our email address. Uh, send us an email or reach out to your account rep. Uh, last question here, do you design the ads? So no, we're just a technology company. Um, you know, we, we don't design the ads. Uh, so typically the, the clients, for the most part, you know, they, they have a team or an agency they work with that design the ads. So three components to a campaign. It's going to be the list or the data. You're going to submit that to us. Uh, you're going to submit to us the actual creative or the ad. And then the third and final component to the campaign is that landing page, that URL. So once they click the ad, where do they go? What's the landing page look like? And, and so that's up to you, the client, to design a, a custom landing page that's going to, you know, convert or capture their information. Good question. So I think that's it. Thank you again for your time. Uh, you know, Crystal and I really appreciate, you know, your time. We're going to do this once a week. We'll have different topics we'll be covering. So we'll have another general webinar at the end of this month. And we look forward to, to seeing you and working with you.
Thank you. Have a good day, guys.